So hello everybody, um, welcome to this Brexit webinar for June 2018. Uh, I'm Steve Bates, the CEO of the BIA, and I'll be joined by Laura Collister uh, on this one. Uh, last time round we talked about um, various bits, but uh, today we're hoping to take you up, uh, get you up to speed on the negotiations, what's happened at the European Council up until today, what's been going on in the UK, uh, quite a lot of action in Parliament, uh, less so with regard to the Irish border, what's gone on at uh, European level and where we are before taking any questions you may have. So uh, a month ago in May, we took you through uh, where the negotiations had got to, a UK update, uh, and uh, these are recorded and then put onto YouTube. So if you want to catch up, uh, they are on our uh, YouTube channel, uh, Bio Industry. So we're two years on from the referendum two years ago. Uh, where are we? Uh, we're still working on our four core policy areas, regulation, trade, R&D and funding and talent. We still want regulatory cooperation and we've had a uh, public commitment from the government and the opposition that that's their intended policy. I hope we've got some profile and knowledge uh, amongst the government of our issues for our industry. So uh, I hope that uh, this process has engaged uh, and I know it has engaged government, parliament, the media, uh, other industry sectors, organisations like the CBI and patient groups in the things that uh, we as a sector care about. We have formal mechanisms for engagement, which is good, uh, through uh, the ministerial steering group, policy groups, the European Trade Association Coalition, the Brexit Health Alliance, and uh, we've worked closely to make sure there's uh, industry alignment on uh, a sectoral voice, working closely with the ABPI and others, and aligned that with Europa Bio and FPA to make sure there's an aligned voice across Europe. So. Um, some success in process, but uh, there's a draft transition deal which is not yet agreed and uh, unfortunate from our perspective, medicines I don't see in the written areas a priority in those deals yet. We remain hopeful. And of course, uh, people say what's the position of the BIA and what's the position on the sector? Um, it's the same as you'll have heard it from us if you're regulars on this for, for many, many months. We want to maintain a formal relationship with the European Medicines Agency for the UK after exit day and frictionless borders for these good reasons, to ensure the continued supply of medicines for UK patients and vice versa, uh, EU patients uh, from day one post Brexit, to safeguard uh, rapid and effective patient safety and public health systems, including pandemic response uh, in the UK and the EU, make sure UK patients are able to get access to the latest medical treatments at launch via speedy clinical trials and through R&D of medicines in the UK. From a business perspective, we don't want to duplicate um, uh, both the cost and time of additional red tape, and we want to maintain and grow the life science industry in the UK. Uh, we've obviously uh, maintained the uh, good case that we made really, even from before the, the referendum, that brain circulation is beneficial to uh, a knowledge economy and particularly the, the bioeconomy that we all work in. We need to make sure that people can move around to, um, to uh, access these jobs as freely as possible and that we all benefit from such brain circulation. And for R&D and funding, um, uh, it's important that the UK science base and SMEs can continue to engage with Horizon 2020 and its successor, tentatively known as Horizon Europe now and with the European Investment Fund and the European Investment Bank. So um, despite all of the, the ups and downs in Brexit, I hope we've got a consistent theme tune at the very least uh, that you guys are well aware of and we remain consistent with as, as we get nearer to the, to the day. Uh, on negotiations, I'm going to hand over to Laura, who's been tracking these closely this week. Laura. Um, so this, this week was the European Council. They met yesterday and today, um, ages ago, well, back in March, when the last European Council didn't come to agreement on the transition deal, we were all talking about how important June would be. But as, that's, as it's got closer to this June European Council, it's turned out not to be that important. And I think for the last sort of three, four weeks, we've been refocusing our thoughts onto the October and um, December meetings. So this week's one has turned out to be a bit more of the same as usual, the need for progress. So um, they were 
this morning at um, the council, they met in their EU27 format, so the UK wasn't in the room. Um, Barnier, who's the lead negotiator for the European Commission, gave an update, talked about the completed work and withdrawal issues, and an updated document had been published earlier this week, which we will go on to discussion around Ireland and Northern Ireland, and then there was discussion around framework for future relationship. But as you're saying, time's running out. There's no border agreement or Northern Ireland, um, for Ireland and Northern Ireland. There still remains splits in the UK government, and the UK and EU Parliament still need to be able to pass the withdrawal legislation and future legislation before um, March um, 2019. Um, European Parliament has said that they would need to complete a document in the autumn or at least by the end of the year at the very latest to be able to do this in time. So today, um, the same Brexit was discussed. Um, a document was issued after the meeting and then there was a press conference um, this afternoon where they've got to is this sort of official line that um, they welcomed where there has been um, progress and there has been some agreement, um, but they specifically initially um, focused on territorial issues, notably regards Gibraltar. Um, this was um, everything in the papers has been talking about Northern Ireland and um, nothing about Gibraltar. Um, for progress on Gibraltar, the UK and Spain needs to have separate discussions is what the European Commission has said. Um, back to Ireland, talked about issues around the Irish and Northern Irish border, um, said that the UK, noted that the UK had given undertakings in both December 2017 and March 2018, or that they would um, come up with um, new solutions, um, but, and also reiterated that they can't go back on commitments that have already been taken, they need to be respected. So um, the Commission also said that they need to accelerate the view um, in terms of accelerate working towards a political declaration for future relationship um, and they want some clarity, realistic and workable solutions from the UK. They also noted that if the UK positions were to involve, the UK, the EU would reconsider its offer um, in accordance to the principles which they had stated previously. Um, finally, they also called on all member states, institutions and stakeholders to become more prepared themselves for all, at all levels and for all outcomes. Um, so as I mentioned, the withdrawal agreement um, has been updated. Um, the most piece of most relevance to our sector was around SPCs. Um, I think our view is that um, any clarity, further clarity is good and we did put out a BI statement on that, um, but obviously more work needs to be done in that area. Um, a few key dates. Um, so I mentioned the upcoming European Councils, 18th, 19th of October, 13th, 14th of December, and then also there is another one in March, just before Brexit Day, um, on the 31st of March. Um, prior to that, a few key events. Um, obviously the BIA MHRI conference um, next week, but the next day, next Friday, UK Cabinet has a meeting on, pre on Brexit at Chequers and it is anticipated at the moment, which I guess will depend on the outcome of that meeting on the 6th, that the Brexit white paper is likely to come out on Monday the 9th of July. Um, I think for us this is going to be key, well, hopefully for all sectors, and without it having substantial content and policy in it, I think it would make it very hard for the EU, um, and the EU is obviously expecting a lot from this paper as well. Thanks, Laura. I mean, I think if I can just comment on that, um, uh, you can see we were expecting it to be uh, great guns, big big result uh, this week, and we would be able to tell you what was going on. Um, uh, we thought this would be the moment. Uh, it's not, uh, and uh, the uh, the the UK government's position has been kicked down the road a bit. Uh, we expect to see it not next week, but the week after in the white paper, and the detail or lack of detail in the white paper, I think, will be uh, quite important. Um, for us. I hope also that there's an opportunity at the MHRA conference with the BIA next week for us to get into some more of the detail around um, uh, some of the technical stuff that may be able to move on a on a regulatory basis. But um, I do come along on Thursday if you're interested in the deep uh, areas of that. 
in more general senses from the UK, I'm going to talk about UK updates. So lots of toing and froing at Westminster. Uh, uh, if you followed it, it's been on the news most of the time. Uh, some very technical amendments going through the Lords, uh, this is signified by the joke here on the right and the Matt cartoon. So the government lives to surrender another day. Uh, I think um, we've worked on the uh, withdrawal bill. There was a, that this has now gone through uh, Parliament and two elements of this that are particularly relevant to our sector. Um, the, there were 14 amendments by the Lords of which there was toing and froing over a couple of weeks. What people failed to, re to recognise was there was one amendment from the Lords that the, the, the Commons accepted, which was this one uh, around uh, the ability for the UK to stay in European agencies if they so decide to. Uh, and this wasn't uh, rejected by the government. So there is a legal capability for the UK to remain in agencies if that is the end of the negotiation deal, which is useful. And we lined up and lobbied, lobbied behind this one uh, in the weeks before that uh, vote. And on clinical trials, this was discussed during the passage of this bill during the House of Lords. And Lord Patel withdrew his clinical trial regulation amendment uh, when uh, uh, see, with some assurances from the front bench in the House of Lords, which uh, said that if the clinical trial comes into force during the transition period, it will automatically apply in the UK under the withdrawal agreement. Um, uh, and uh, uh, there's a desire to be aligned, although it's not formally in the legislation. They've also, uh, UK government's also spent, spent some time uh, publishing further details on uh, how uh, settled status for EU citizens and their families will work through the, through the Brexit period, trying to make it very straightforward and very easy. This is the website link for this. And if you've got staff or people who are uh, affected by this, there is now greater clarity, although not if they are from Norway, Iceland, Liechtenstein, Switzerland. Uh, but it's basically, you'll be able to register in a fairly straightforward way with a new home office computer system, which of course we all know will work instantly and perfectly from day one. I think the other element that we've seen in the UK is, um, let me call it some argy-bargy between the government and industry in public over the last couple of weeks. Uh, the government has responded to public statements from Airbus, Siemens, BMW on their frustrations around the Brexit negotiation process and how they are having to plan for uh, scenarios which may involve jobs leaving uh, the UK. Uh, the, the health secretary uh, was sort of uh, was uh, was instrumental in making headlines on this last Sunday on an appearance in the political Andrew Marr show, uh, saying he thought it was completely inappropriate for businesses to be making these kinds of threats because uh, people should get behind Theresa May. But then there's been a bit of rowing back on that this week with Greg Clark saying you know, the business company that uh, the government was keen to take an act on the advice of business. Putting uh, evidence before ideology was important, uh, and um, there was also uh, reporting of uh, uh, of Boris uh, Johnson, the Foreign Secretary, at a reception I was fortunate enough to be invited to, having said uh, his view was F business uh, when, uh, uh, and this wasn't really uh, put down uh, in Parliament by the expressed scepticism about some of those views uh, of those who profess to speak up for business. Um, Theresa May uh, has also been uh, calming the issues uh, down. But I think what this means is that um, uh, there has been some heavy uh, discussion uh, with business being more vocal, I think, about the lack of progress than we've seen in the past. Our position, uh, which has been public really since before the referendum, and we continue to, to make the case, is that there is vital that patients and public health needs are the priority both in the UK and the EU. And we need clarity and we need um, uh, uh, we need to know how things are going to operate as soon as uh, as soon as possible. But I think it's a slightly different context for that discussion uh, this month. We expect with bated breath uh, out of this, uh, these wonderful gates at Chequers, uh, the Brexit white paper to be discussed at a cabinet sleepover or, or, or uh, event that starts next Friday. Uh, uh, may go into the weekend and we expect after that there to be a, uh, a white paper on how the government proposes to, um, uh, to, to engage uh, with uh, Europe going forward. We're told, if you read, uh, this is speculation gleaned from the Times newspaper, a draft of the white paper proposes binding Britain into Europe's regulatory framework for goods. This seems to be the, the current thinking. Who knows if that, that will survive a week or not? Um, uh, and uh, could be a way of solving the Irish border question but would mean that there would be limited ability for the UK to do new trade deals, which have been 
uh, a red line hitherto for, for, for the UK government. Uh, so uh, we think that this might be where they think they're going to be, but uh, I don't know. Don't hold us to it because uh, you know could uh, could the uh, could the, the, the compromise be follow single market rules, rules on goods, industrial regulations, and uphold European law? But maybe uh, uh, that but uh, have an ability to to trade freely in services. On customs, um, it looks like the row that was around last month about the difference between um, uh, two different views of how they might do customs has been. Favor it's gone in the favor in favor of maximum facilitation to avoid checks. But if there's a single market, um, uh, you know, sorry, if there's a uh, if there's a uh, a single market rules for for goods, there's maybe customs maybe less of a barrier. But who knows uh, where we'll be? And I think if you want to uh, have a look at a, a report that may have led to this thinking, there's a good IOD Institute of Directors report which we've linked on here called a hybrid option for. UK EU trade framework, which uh, we think is where that this thinking uh, derives from. So, who knows where we'll be um, in two weeks' time? But I think this is our our best guess as to where the UK current thinking may be. Um, but um, read the papers at the weekend for the, for the latest. Um, we've uh, engaged with the, through the Brexit Health Alliance, and and uh, I think that is a very useful public health briefing, which was a little hidden under some of the other activity that went on. Uh, last week, and uh, I encourage you to have a look at it, um, uh, that uh, calling on the EU and the UK to prioritise the public health, public's health in the negotiations uh, and looking at really the health security aspects of the UK and the EU working together, uh, uh, which I think is important. And if you see chimes with some of the arguments that are being made about uh, the physical security of, uh, uh, of, of being better together, than you've seen, uh, than we've seen uh, around issues around terrorism and and, and criminal justice. Uh, so this sort of chimes in with that 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 element, uh, and has been something that we've contributed to. So Steve, you asked me what if you saw Theresa May uh, on her way to, uh, um, to to watch the football or uh, enjoy a weekend in the garden or perhaps some cricket, as we know she's more of a fan of. Uh, what would uh, I ask her to do to help uh, life sciences right now? Well, I think. Uh, this is our sort of what you can do right now, Prime Minister list. Um, uh, we'd like to see progress as a first base on a mutual recognition agreement. That is a simpler agreement for the UK and the EU to get to on some basics in our, our sector. Uh, I think it would be great if there was clear public guidance from the MHRA on what they will do in the event of a no deal. We're only 280 days away now from potential cliff edge crash out Brexit if there isn't a deal done. And we'll need a system for people to operate under so it would be useful and it's within the virus of the UK government to enable the MHRA to tell us how they want to uh, organise things if that was to be the, the, the scenario. We really need that. Um, it would be great if there was an agreed position on what goods on the market in a transition deal meant for medicines. Uh, getting into the detail of that is very important in terms of uh, exactly the definition of that. And we'd like to know what, what, what's meant by that. It'd be great if that was common with Europe, uh, if we could get to that. Um, perhaps uh, the unilateral recognition of EU, EU 27 market authorizations, EMA market authorizations, perhaps time limited to perhaps the time frame of the uh, of the uh, of the uh, the transition deal, along with the same for for batch release, would be important for the ability for people to be confident to be able to continue to supply uh, in the event of a no deal. Um, it would be great to see a decent paragraph of uh, paragraph or two on uh, how looking to handle the future of medicines in the Brexit white paper that's coming out of the uh, checkers, we think, in a week or so's time. We need to resolve, resolve, resolve and progress border issues for, for medicines and uh, those who participated in the Department of Health and Social Care's survey uh, through EY uh, would welcome some feedback, some readout on what you're going to do with the as a result of the information that you fed in. So this is sort of our, our immediate uh, ask list and we'll be pushing on this during the next uh, month or so. Uh, we have a UK Parliament Day where we'll go and engage with BIA members, uh, with many payers uh, in Westminster and Parliament. And we do have another formal meeting with the government this month, but this is a fast moving scenario. So uh, who knows where we'll be after the Chequers Summit uh, in a week or so time. Laura, do you want to take us through where we've got to on e EU side of things? 
Yep, absolutely. Um, just very quickly first, I did put my email address on the slide so you just talked through. It's really good to be able to demonstrate to government when we ask for something what it actually means for a business. So if um, anyone does any views or what it could actually mean or how it would help and why it's important to have it now and not sort of further on towards potentially March 2019. So if you do have that and you have some views, um, we can treat anything anonymously, please do email me. Um, on to um, EU. Um, touching very quickly on the European Council, um, we just put this in here just to show how much other stuff there is going on at an EU level that's not Brexit. Um, whilst it well, it completely takes up all my time um, and in the UK we're spending a lot of time on it and it is all over the papers. I think we need to put it into perspective that from the EU side it is moving down the priority list and we're seeing sort of less interest in some of the Brexit issues. Um, Obviously, migration um, has overtaken us and security and defence is also um, really important. Um, innovation and in digital was also um, discussed yesterday at the Council and they actually came up with some quite good readouts from um, their discussions there about sort of helping SMEs innovate and create um, world leading companies. Um, so as I was saying, Brexit was discussed this morning. Also today they had the Euro Summit, which is um, looking um, around um, banking union, etc. Um, EMA has published an update to its um, question and answers and practical guidance. Um, they um, continually remind companies um, that the UK will become a third country on um, in March 2019 um, and therefore um, provide guidance on how to treat the UK going forward. There has been um, a few bits of new information in there, especially around um, QPPVs, um, around uh, multi-country packs of medicines and also around um, the OMCL um, and vaccines. Um, it is available on their website and I see that I haven't put the website link on here for you. Um, so apologies for that. If you can't, It is easy to find. If you can't find it, please do email me. Um, as um, we're saying is like BIA is engaged um, with its European um, association colleagues. Um, so there's a European coalition of all the trade associations that we've talked about previously, and we're continuing to work um, on aligning those policy positions. We have already have a document that has aligned positions. We're looking at where they need to evolve and um, where we need to change and um, especially around things around future relationship and there is joint engagement from the coalition members with the EU audiences. Um, BIA is a member of Europa Bio and we're continuing to engage them um, with them. Steve was at Europa Bio this week. He went to their board and their healthcare associations council and it was also the FPA board and dinner this week. And I think from from my perspective, I think there is continued alignment uh, across those those uh, those groupings with the the messages that I outlined at the beginning, uh, which is great. And I think we are all keen that um, that things uh, get moving on on, on, on this uh, as soon as possible. One thing we did see um, over the last week was an international business statement. So the American Chamber of Commerce to the EU, the Canadian round. Canada Europe Roundtable for Business, the Europe India Chamber of Commerce and the Japan, Japan Business Council in Europe put together a joint statement um, calling for the European Council to make progress on the outstanding issues in Brexit, um, talked about um, the need for regulatory cooperation, um, post-Brexit preparedness and governance um, and that how they the need to avoid a cliff edge scenario in March 2019. Um, i would not seen a similar statement from these organisations before, so it's interesting their timing and seeking to publicise this joint view. Um, very quickly, we, um, Guy Verhofstadt, visited the UK a few weeks ago and gave evidence to the exiting the EU Parliamentary Select Committee. He talked about the UK um, having an associating, association agreement with the EU um, 
in the future um, and it also highlighted the need um, for clear progress and that they need time to get um, anything through the European Parliament for them to ratify it. He's also um, this week um, following well, yesterday, two days ago, following um, the UK government's um, publication of advice for EU nationals in the UK written to um, the Article 50 Working Party at the EU to highlight that um, similar progress needs to be made for UK nationals working in the in EU27. Um, so he seems to be sort of taking more of a continuing his interest in the rights of UK citizens of citizens both from the UK and the EU27. Um, there has been sort of um, this is discussion from the Times again about um, whether it's time that um, the crack, whether cracks are starting to form in the EU 27, I think, um, and how um, maybe this um, time for something more bespoke to come um, up and time for discussions to move on a little bit. So I think there's sort of, everyone realizes that Bonnier has done a really good job in the negotiations so far, but with a lack of progress and, um, certain UK proposals sort of not getting very far, such as the recent Irish border proposal, um, not getting much discussion from much response from the Commission and the Article 50 task force it is potentially time for things to move on a little bit and um, whether there's pressure from most European governments um, for there to be some trade-offs and to recognise that there could potentially be a bespoke deal. Um, yeah, thanks. Thanks. Thanks, Laura. So what have we been doing um, to finish off? And then I'll take some 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 questions and some comments. Um, so in the last month, we focused on the withdrawal bill in the UK and the, the agency's amendment, which was accepted by government. So hopefully that was useful. We continue to have uh, meetings with the UK government on regulation, trade, how the grandfathering of mutual recognition agreements could work in a uh, a transition in environment. Uh, the formal meeting of the UK uh, EU Relationships Group, which used to be called uh, the UK EU Life Science Steering Group. We've engaged with the, the media. I think you've seen a general more uh, interest in the media and business perspectives on the fact that nothing's happening. Uh, and uh, we've sought to engage with uh, members uh, to keep them informed both through this format and other meetings. What's coming up um, next? Uh, well, we have uh, a, a key meeting on the 16th of July, which is our Brexit lead network, uh, where we will get the latest again from DEX-EU and also the cross-government border delivery group, which is around um, supply chain issues, how they're going to work, how the border's going to work. And we will have an industry only discussion at that meeting. We continue to have industry government meetings on regulation, trade and intellectual property. Um, we have another meeting of the EU relationship group with ministers in July, which will be post the checkers meeting where we'll have the white paper. And depending on where things come in the next month, uh, we'll continue to engage with uh, media and the parliament, uh, notably through uh, Parliament Day. And just to remind you, our position uh, still remains the same. Please, uh, government, maintain a formal relationship with the European Medicines Agency after exit day and frictionless borders so that we can continue to do these things. Uh, the movement of people is important and we would like to continue engagement with um, Horizon Europe. Uh, interesting that innovation stuff was mentioned, the European Council ahead of Brexit and the EIF and EIB. And if you're not able to do any of these things, please tell us. Um, so that's really where we are. So. A month ago, uh, I thought that the June Council would be key, but it isn't. Things have been kicked down the road until October or December uh, politically, but that means that, that there is even less time now for, um, so there's continued uncertainty for us in, in the sector, and there's even less time to make any changes that may be needed uh, against a hard Brexit, which I know for companies is unwelcome news. Uh, and I know that this means that many companies are deep into the contingency planning that they triggered at the beginning of the year and are needing to spend money and move things uh, in order to uh, 
to prepare for what uh, I would describe as the worst and uh, I know many companies believe be the worst so we're not in a great place time is running out uh, we are pushing for the UK government to do that which is within its own uh, own um, various things that it can do alone uh, in terms of uh, establishing what it would do in a, in a hard Brexit scenario uh, because we need that we think that that's needed for uh, planning for uh, continuation of supply in a hard Brexit environment for 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 UK and uh, and EU patients um, and we continue to remain uh, committed to try and get the best solution for for everybody against the, the hard work that you've all inputted to over a couple of years and um, we appreciate your help and support um, I'm sorry I'm not able to provide to you um, a clearer plan than that um, uh, I, I'm sure you're as frustrated as I am that there isn't more clarity in terms of operation and uh, I do feel at the moment that sometimes it feels like we're doing these monthly and I feel a little bit like a, a broken record and the bearer of no news rather than rather than certainty. Uh, thank you for continuing to to stay with us. Uh, uh, I can tell you I tell you what what I what I know and and, it, and it's, a, it's a frustration for me that um, uh, that uh, that we're not further forward. Uh, I, 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 I hope I'm reflecting uh, the tone and sentiment that you have and if you do have views do please keep feeding them in because it is really important for us to understand because we realise that this is a moving picture in the sector uh, as we get into this. With that I think I'll stop there and I'm keen to take some, some comments or questions uh, from, from people. Uh, do please uh, input on the chat as you have been doing uh, uh, down the years. Any news about the MHRA EMA relationship? Um, MHRA is still an observer, or has the position uh, uh, has the position evolved? No formal um, uh, news uh, on that changing at this stage. Uh, the EMA guidance is clear on the EMA's website and is updated regularly. Um, I hope to see something from the MHRA, and uh, we've not yet had further update on that in terms of uh, uh, of agreement in a transition uh, transition agreement. Uh, I'm interested if people have, are able to, to share ideas around um, uh, around uh, things that are happening in the sector. And George, uh, we'll follow up with you on the example that uh, that you're suggesting there. It's not one that I've seen. Uh, we are starting to see uh, direct impact and uh, uh, and people making business decisions uh, executed against contingency plans at this stage. Um, uh, but I leave it for companies to uh, to put their their, their positions in the public domain uh, themselves. We're not looking to, to do that ourselves at the, at, at the moment. I fear that we've reduced you all to, um, to, to silence and I hope that's not because we've not done a good job. I hope you're as just as upset as we are that they were not able to move further forward. Uh, So David's uh, suggesting UK GMT staff suggest that UK batch release will continue to be accepted till the end of transition. EMA suggesting third country by March, which is right. Great question, David. Um, it would be good if there was alignment uh, on this. I think that we are seeing uh, a divergence of advice from um, uh, from people that you'd hope would be able to, to um, get to a common tune. I don't know if you're at DIA Global um, this week. Um, I think that uh, I think the answer to that is is um, that if a transition deal is done, then uh, then um, then potentially batch release um, could be uh, could be um, could be part of a transition deal or an ongoing deal, and there is a chance that that deal will be done sooner. But if no deal is done, then the EMA are taking the position that the UK is a third country from uh, next March. Um, and as we get closer to that time with no deal done, the, 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 the ability to get that deal done is running out of time. So I think it depends on whether a deal is done. And um, you can see that we don't have a deal in June, which I had hoped we would have in June. We may have the bones of a deal uh, across the summer, but I realise that it doesn't provide you with 
the time that you need to make to plan with certainty and I realize that's not a great answer um, Helen you're, you 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 talk about that a concern at DIA that notified bodies are not going to be ready for uh, next March um, I, I think that uh, the scale of change that there is in the in the regulatory system uh, against the timeframes we are working was always always a tall order and I think as we get shorter and shorter timeframes for those to deal for those to be completed uh, we will see how practical the initial plans were for the amount of change that needs to be done both with the European Medicines Agency we don't yet quite know what the MHRA are asking for for, for in terms of changes and I think all of this is very ambitious against the timeframes that uh, that are identified I mean we remember the amount of time it took the EMA to move around the corner within Canary Wharf they've not, now not only got to move to a move to Amsterdam but they've got to uh, significantly alter some of their systems I know they're working very hard to do so companies are working hard at this as well um, the MHRA have got to um, be, be clear about how they are going to do things and, uh, and provide some guidance too I think it is very difficult to do all of this against the time frames that we have against us uh, against a cliff edge or hard Brexit. Um, uh, I hope that we'll get a deal between uh, between now and the autumn, but um, uh, we haven't seen as much progress in the first six months of the year as as, uh, as I had hoped we would see. So uh, apologies. Um, ICH membership for the UK. Um, don't know that one can I take that one offline and come back to you who's asking asking about that one we will we'll look into that how will brexit be taken into account during the PPRS negotiations Good question. Um, the ABPI are doing the, uh, the direct negotiations on the PPRS, so I don't have perfect line of sight on uh, on this. Uh, my sense is that uh, it's obviously a context, uh, and uh, obviously uh, the PPRS is a um, a deal which looks which balances both the ability for uh, uh, for a life science sector to grow in the UK with a, uh, a fair deal for the NHS in terms of pharmaceutical um, pricing. Um, I, I don't think that, uh, uh, so I think it is the obvious context against which that discussion is happening. How it is play, being played within the negotiations, I don't know, uh, is the honest answer. I think that I'm going to suggest that we uh, we, we finish there. Um, uh, uh, I'm going to move forward and tell you about what we're doing next. So you've got that. So uh, you can see that um, uh, I'm quite excited by next Thursday, uh, where we will be with the MHRA at 30 Euston Square. Uh, I think you can still register uh, at uh, biamhraconference.org um, for what will be the, the horse's mouth um, uh, uh, for uh, uh, for the latest uh, updates on this and the chance to engage and ask any questions. So um, do please come if you're interested in this space. I, I think it is timely and uh, I hope we welcome uh, space for, for, for discussion. Uh, if you're a member and you want to come to the Brexit Lead Network where we'll look more broadly than regulation, particularly about trade, people and other issues, um, email Laura. We're doing that uh, the following week and that will be after when we think the white paper will be out, so we might be able to have some initial discussions about where that's got to and here where Department for Exiting the EU have got to on our sector. Um, and then we've got uh, another one of these uh, on uh, Friday, July the 20th. We brought it forward a week so that we thought people might be away on holiday in the last week of July. So perhaps we can be the last thing standing between you and the beach on uh, July the 20th. Uh, although if you are around in August, we will also be uh, popping in mid-August because I imagine that could be a busy summer if things are moving uh, and uh, mark your card for some other dates uh, later in the autumn. The Bioscience Forum on October the 18th is the one to mark your diary for. Uh, it'll be a great day. If you're not a member, please do consider joining. Jane would love to hear from you. Uh, we do lots other than this, um, but I uh, hope this is uh, useful for you. And uh, registration is open for our next one 
on Friday, July the 20th. With that, many thanks and have a good, uh, good month.